Getting a bunch of the basics down. I think today's lecture might be a little more self-contained. We're only talking about sort of two concepts here, still relating to graphs. And what we want to talk about today is intersects. And as for what we want to say about them, well, we want to define them first of all, and we want to know how to find them. And more than either of those things, maybe, of course, we want to know why we care about these things. What good are they and what do they mean? And actually, I've stated this as a single topic, but it has kind of two subtopics built into it because there are two kinds of intercepts. And we are going to look at them both. We're going to look at X intercepts and we're going to look, come on, at Y intercepts. And I guess let's start by presenting this material graphically. Let's say we have a graph. This graph has an X axis and a Y axis. So the Cartesian plane. And then we have some curve on this graph. Maybe we have that. That's the graph of some equation. Well, the X intercepts and the Y intercepts are very literal definitions. You'll notice that this curve intercepts the Y axis. And where the curve intercepts the y-axis is called the y-intercept. And you'll notice that this curve intersects the x-axis. And where the curve intersects the x-axis, is the X intercept. In this case, there are two X intercepts and one Y intercept. And it's pretty normal to just have one Y intercept, but maybe have multiple X intercepts. We'll kind of see that as the class goes on. A graph does not have to have either of those features. Here is an example of a graph that has an X intercept, but doesn't have any Y intercept. It just sort of goes down and never touches the Y axis. Here is an example of a graph that has a Y intercept, but doesn't have any X intercepts. It never touches the X axis. So it's perfectly possible that one or both of these things does not exist. But if they do exist, 
we tend to be interested in them for various reasons that we'll get into. And now that we've looked at these graphically, I'm just going to take them one by one. So I'm going to talk about y-intercepts, then I'm going to talk about x-intercepts as two separate concepts. So we'll start with y. Enter my spelling. Well, too much trouble to correct. We'll start with y intercepts. And we'll ask the question, how do we find a y-intercept? And finding y-intercepts is really at least usually straightforward. To find the y-intercept, if there is one, we just set x equal to zero. So it can be a little tricky to remember, I guess, because we're trying to find the y-intercept, but we're setting x equal to something. So maybe that's slightly unintuitive, but it's usually very straightforward to do in practice. And the reason for that is that in general, when we have an equation, we're going to have y by itself on one side of an equality, and then we'll have x's on the other side of the equality. And if you set x equal to zero, that's usually a very straightforward process. And you can just read y right off. So if x is zero here, y is negative one half, and there's your intercept. And even though this formula is in a sense kind of complicated, we've got a fraction and we've got a square. This being kind of complicated doesn't really make the intercept difficult to find. I mean, you could make it even more complicated. Y equals 2x left square plus the square root of x plus 1 plus x divided by x minus 2. You've got a bunch of stuff here, but even so, setting x equal to zero is not really, or hopefully isn't, that difficult. If x is zero, we have two times zero squared plus the square root of zero plus one plus zero divided by zero minus two. And either you do this in your head or you plug it into a calculator and the y-intercept just pops right out. So you just let x be a value and you see what happens. So that's how to find it. But why would we want to find it? 
I promised this wasn't going to be a pure math course. So if we're talking about these, hopefully they have some kind of real world utility. And the answer is that in word or story problems, the Y intercept usually <coughs> has some kind of special meaning. And in particular, the y-intercept is usually representing some kind of initial value. Let's look at an example or two to try to nail home this intuition. Let's look at a bottle rocket launch. And actually, I'm still getting used to having basically infinite space to work with. We might as well do this in its own slide. Let's let X be the number of seconds since the launch of a bottle rocket from a fat form. And that's the Y be the height of the bottle rocket above the ground. And I underlined ground here because the bottle rocket is launching from a platform even before you set it off, it's already not on the ground. It's already sitting some distance above the ground. And we'll measure height in meters. And never mind where this comes from. You, you took like physics in high school. This might be familiar, but a realistic equation relating X and Y might look something like that. Y equals negative 4.9 X squared plus 7.5 X plus one. So we have this equation. Let's now relate this to what we're doing. Let's relate it to the y-intercept. Let's start by finding the y-intercept. So actually somebody tell me what it is. I heard one, and that is correct. Remember that to find this, we let X be zero. If we let X be zero, 
then y is 4.9, negative 4.9 times zero squared plus 75 times zero plus one. And this is zero plus zero plus one. So the y intercept is one. But what does this y intercept mean? That was sort of the point of this problem. Well, remember what x equals zero represents. X is the number of seconds after the launch. So with zero seconds after the launch, the bottle rocket hasn't moved yet. It's still sitting there on the platform. Come on. And when the rocket is still on the platform, its height is one. So when the rocket is sitting on the platform, it is one meter above the ground. Ergo, the platform is one meter tall. And going back to what I said earlier, that the y-intercept usually represents some kind of initial value. Well, initially, the rocket is one meter off the ground at the moment of launch. So that's the kind of thing that the y-intercept represents. If I'm not going to give a uh, formula here, but maybe will that X be the number of units of something, a business cells? I do it, my spelling suddenly taking a downturn, the eraser isn't working. Never mind, never mind. We can old fashioned scribble that out. So that's that X be the number of units of business cells and Y and B the profit that the business makes and maybe the graph looks something like that. And the y-intercept is down here. Maybe this is the point. Let's just pull something out. Maybe this is the point zero, negative 1,000. And again, this should be understood, this y-intercept should be understood as an initial value before the business starts to sell any units, they are $2,000 in debt. So that's sort of their initial profit or their initial debt, if you prefer. Initially, their profit is this. As they sell units, it will increase. So that's the y-intercept. It tends to represent initial values. And it is found 
always in the same way by letting x be zero. Does anybody <laughs> have questions about that as a concept? Shape does it make? What? Oh, parabola. It makes a parabola go away. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions about the Y and Dursa? Then the X and Dursa. is maybe or no maybe about it, the X intercept is definitely a little trickier on a number of levels. On the X intercept, remember, I say X intercept, but maybe there is more than one of them. is the moment where the graph hits the x-axis. And we'll ask the same questions we asked earlier. And when we ask the question, how do we find this? At first blush, it's not obvious why x intercept should be more difficult to work with, because the answer is directly parallel to y intercepts. To find a y intercept, we set x equal to zero. To find an x-intercept, we set y equal to zero. In practice, though, finding x-intercepts is trickier. And let's investigate that statement with an example. Let's put make something up off the top of my head. Y equals two X squared plus X minus three. And let's find the Y intercept first of all. We set X equal to zero. Y is two times zero squared plus zero minus three. That's negative three. Zero plus zero minus three is negative three. So that's, I mean, even at, you know, if worst comes to worst, you could plug that into your calculator. It's not. But if we now want to find the x intercept, we set y equal to zero, but setting y equal to zero gives us an equation we have to solve. Whereas that an 
XP0. This is something you could just plug into your calculator that in YB0 gives you an equation. And that equation could be easy to solve or it could be quite difficult to solve. I mean, this equation here, unless you happen to have memorized the quadratic form to the, it would be very difficult to find the X intercepts of this because without the quadratic form to the, it's not at all clear how you would solve this equation. And we can see this again if we go back a few slides. Finding the y-intercept here was straightforward. At least relatively straightforward. I mean, if it's Finding the X inter, my spelling is just completely shot to this class, but finding the X intercepts, if you let Y be zero, zero equals two X squared plus the square root of X plus one plus X divided by x minus two. I have no idea how to, how to solve that equation. I'm not sure it's possible to solve that equation. In fact, aside from using graphing software to estimate the solution. So whereas finding the y-intercept was straightforward, finding the x-intercept emphatically isn't in this case. So it's just kind of been bad news from the start with these things, but Let's sort of brush that aside for now and ask the same question we asked about why intercepts. Why do X intercept? matter. And the answer to that question is similar to the answer about Y intercepts. They usually mean something. in the real world. What they mean maybe requires a little more thought. This doesn't have a one size fits all meaning like initial value. But let's go back to that bottle rocket. Here is the time since launch. Here is the height and the graph looks something like that. That's if the eraser is working again, let me try to draw this slightly more to scale. The graph looks maybe something like this. This is confined to the first quadrant. 
going back to what I was saying yesterday, time has to be positive, height has to be positive. So we're only looking at the first quadrant. Here is our X intercept. And our x-intercept has some kind of concrete real-world meaning. Just looking at the graph, can somebody tell me what that is? The time. Could you, sorry, my. Oh, isn't that isn't it just saying the time it takes for something to reach that certain height? Well, that's I mean that's partly correct. I mean this is as you say the time, and this is the height. What's the height at this point? Zero. Zero. So when the height is zero, the object has just. Hit the ground, it stopped falling. So the X intercept here is the time it takes the object to hit. The ground. We're going back a few frames. Business majors in the room. Here's unit sold. Here's profit. Here's our X intercept. What's the X intercept represent here? How many of the business sold? How many of the business sold? Well, it, it's you're right. It's a number of units. Um, more specifically than that, maybe. I mean, this company is initially in debt. If it doesn't sell any units, it's $2,000 in the red. As the number of units sold increases, the profit increases from being negative to being zero to being a positive. And that moment where the business stops losing money and starts making money is the break even point. It's where they are now, the moment they stop being in the red and start being in the black. So to interpret, to interpret these things, you just have to ask yourself, well, what the X and Y mean in this particular problem? Like going back, to here, why is the height above the ground? And remember that to find the x intercept, you set y equal to zero. So the x-intercept is the moment the object is zero feet above the ground. In other words, it's the moment the object is on the ground. 
Likewise, here, why is the prophet? So to interpret this intercept, well, it occurs when y equals zero. So this is the moment, the number of units sold when there is no profit, when there's not a negative profit representing a loss or a positive profit representing a gain. And those are the X and the Y intercepts. And you might just, well, does anybody know if they have any questions before I distribute the work? <clears throat> and you might discover that you have questions. Again, I expect this is going to turn into homework, but you can start in the class and I'll be walking around and you can raise your hand and ask me if you into difficulty. You sort of get those. You just keep adding them. That is so There's no, uh, the textbooks on buy, okay. you don't need to buy it. Okay. 